Hi, I am Helene from Team Alicia. I support the team with my scientific expertise. I am a passionate diver and today I will take you with me to Guadalupe's corals. Guadalupe is a French island in the Caribbean. It is also the destination of the Rupe de Rum, a regatta that crosses the Atlantic and in which our skipper Boris is currently participating. Soon you will sail past the Custor Reserve, which is known for its rich underwater world and where we are currently waiting for him. Coral reefs are also referred to as the rainforest of the ocean. They may only cover a small part of the seafloor, but every fourth known oceanic species actually lives there. Coral reefs are extremely biodiverse habitats. That's where life really happens. But the experts are warning us. Tropical coral reefs could already be completely destroyed by 2030. They bleach and die. And many animals lose their natural habitat and home. But why? What is threatening the corals? Through climate change, the seawater becomes more and more acidic and heats up. The ocean absorbs CO2 from the sea surface. That is in the air as emissions created by humans. That is carbon dioxide. Maybe you will know this from fizzy drinking water. Obviously, you will not see little bubbles rising to the surface of the sea like in a glass of sparkling water. But even a small amount of CO2 is enough to change the acidity of the ocean. This chemical change is called ocean acidification. The emissions in the atmosphere lead to the warming of our planet Earth. And with that, also to the warming of the oceans. Plants and animals are suffering greatly under the acidification and warming of the oceans. Corals cannot adapt fast enough and this therefore threatens their existence. They bleach and lose their colour. In the past, these coral bleachings occurred every 25 years. In the meantime, the coral reefs had the time to recover or regenerate. Nowadays, this happens every six years and in some places, even yearly. Corals can't recover by themselves anymore. What happens at a coral bleaching? Even if it doesn't look like it, corals are, in actual fact, animals. Longish, hollow polyps. They feel as slippery and slimy as jelly. A part of their food they take in through their gullets. Furthermore, they are supplied with nutrients by little algae that live on them. These algae also give the corals their wonderful colours. Corals excrete lime and form lime skeletons that protect the polyps and algae in return. So they help each other. But because of the temperatures rising, the coral polyps repel the algae. And so the corals starve without the algae. Acidification affects the coral's calcium framework. And without the algae, the coral loses its colour. This is what you call coral bleaching. If we protect our corals, we also protect us humans. As an effect of the corals dying, there are less and less fish in the sea, effectively meaning that the people who rely on fish as their main food source have less food to eat too. Coral reefs feed billions of people. They also protect the structure of our coasts by breaking big waves and affecting currents. They even trap dirt and improve the quality of the water. The life underwater in Guadalupe is so beautiful and very colourful, but the majority of life you can see here is not coral, but sponges. Here the corals have been hugely affected and have died out. I spoke to a diving instructor who works here and she explained that six years ago there were comparatively many more corals. But what can each one of us ourselves do to protect our coral reefs? Despite so many hopeful methods, the reduction of CO2 is the most sustainable and most effective method to protect our oceans. When buying suntan lotion, you can pay attention to it being reef friendly. Because the UV filter in suntan lotion can be harmful to corals when it gets into the ocean from your skin, so when you buy suntan lotion, just have a look at the packaging and what it says on it.